This might be the most important video yet. I know some of you guys struggle with this. We're gonna talk about the truth about sugar cravings and how we can actually beat them. Being addicted to sugar is not something that you have to deal with forever and getting over it will be one of the best things to get into your healthier life as quickly as possible. So let's break down some of the most damaging parts of sugar and why you're craving it so often. So first and foremost, the big thing you start with is that sugar translates to dopamine. When you, when you intake sugar, your body is gonna release dopamine, just like with almost every other drug on the planet. And just like every other drug on the planet, when your body releases dopamine, you're gonna slowly get addictive tendencies to that. Your body is always, always, always chasing after dopamine increasing substances. And this is why people get addicted to drugs, why people get addicted to sugar, why people get addicted to all sorts of things. So one of the biggest things we have to do is treat this almost like a drug. We're going to have to get your body back into a place where it is not craving the dopamine. So the biggest thing to think about here is that when your body takes in sugar, over time, your body's actually gonna become less sensitive to sugar. So you're gonna need more of it. Once again, just like most addictive drugs or substances. So what happens is over time, you intake sugar, it spikes your dopamine, and you restart that cycle. And then over time, you're gonna need more and more sugar to get the same amount of dopamine. And then over time, no matter how much sugar you eat, you will never get enough dopamine from it. And this is where people get into sugar binging. This is where they just eat and they eat and they eat and they can't stop. So we're gonna tell you before the end of the video how we can actually stop this dopamine addiction cycle you have to sugar. Uh, one of the other really big things to talk about is the stress sleep craving cycle. People don't understand how much their sleep and stress are the reason that they're craving sugar. The big thing is that when we are stressed, our cortisol spikes. And when our cortisol spikes, our body starts producing more ghrelin and less leptin, which means that we're hungrier and we're actually more difficult to satisfy. We're, we're more difficult to satiate. Uh, and the same thing goes with sleep, is when we sleep, not only is lack of sleep been shown to increase ghrelin and lower leptin, but also less sleep has also been proven to make us chase more palatable foods, which are high sugar foods. Uh, the studies show that one night of bad sleep can increase sugar cravings by 33%. So how is that for you guys who sleep bad every night? You're just always at an increased state of sugar cravings. So one of the biggest ways to fix this cycle is to reduce our stress levels and sleep better. Try to get seven to nine hours of sleep a day. Uh, and this will really put us in a place where we won't have to worry about our ghrelin and leptin being out of place, but also we're not gonna have to deal with that increased need for hyperpalatable foods that lack of sleep can do for you. Uh, and, and then we're gonna get into probably the biggest one on the board. Besides the addictive tendencies from the dopamine, the most important thing that is causing you to crave sugar all the time is your gut microbiome. And, and it's your own fault. When you, when you feed your gut microbiome certain different foods, it's going to grow different types of bacteria. So there's parts, there's types of bacteria in your gut that feed on healthy fibers and fermented foods and things like this that are, that are gonna be so good for you. They're gonna make you healthier. But there's also bad bacteria in your gut that primarily feeds on sugar. So what happens is over time, you tell your gut what you want it to be craving because you keep feeding it sugar. So the populace of sugar craving bacteria grows and gets bigger and stronger. And the populace of the healthy, happy bacteria you want to have gets smaller. And over time, it's just gonna be whispering, whispering in your ear, please, please give me sugar. Please master, please give me sugar. And, and over time, it's gonna get harder and harder for you to get away from it. So there is gonna to have to be a complete remastering of the gut microbiome if you wanna get over these sugar cravings and we'll explain how to do that. Uh, the glycemic index roller coaster is what most of you guys are living. This is called, this is a fancy word, this is your life. This is what you guys do. The glycemic index is how we study how uh, fast something is digested. So uh, something like sugar is gonna be extremely uh, fast digesting. And at the same time, the more processed the sugar is, the faster it is absorbed, making the dopamine spikes bigger, making the cravings worse, making the cycles all worse, and also just spiking your blood sugar infinitely more. The more you spike your blood sugar, the farther down it comes. And one of the biggest things that leads to most people's sugar cravings is low blood sugar. And the reason they have low blood sugar is that they've, they've messed up their insulin balance over time, but really it's that whenever they eat, they're eating foods that spike their blood sugar, which will inevitably lead to a crashing of their blood sugar, leading to more future cravings. So in order to solve this, we're gonna have to really start putting the right things in. Even on a carbohydrate sugar intake, fruit versus processed sugar processes completely differently. I said fruit can still spike 
take your blood sugar, but by a very small degree compared to a processed sugar. So you can make better decisions. And I'll explain before the end of the video how to actually fix the glycemic index of your body so that you're not having these wild roller coaster cravings throughout the day. And honestly, it'll make you feel a lot better too. And, and one of the big things to hit on to the last one on the board is confusing your signaling. This is something that's very common. People confuse the signals their body is giving them. One of the biggest uh, instances as we see all the time, people confusing lack of hydration and a need for water and electrolytes with hunger. All the time, all the time, people are under, under drinking water throughout the day and they find they're always craving, they're always hungry and they're always, but really they're not hungry at all. They're not craving at all. They're just thirsty and people just like taste. They're addicted to flavor. The dopamine is telling their brain every time they have any signal to put something in their mouth that it is a signal for something super palatable. But really in most cases, it's just water. Your body's just really dehydrated. So if you can drink more water, we can definitely help these confused signals not cause more problems. And the same thing goes for nutrients and carbohydrates. There's times where your body's gonna crave carbohydrates. There's times where your body's gonna be craving certain nutrients. But if every single time your body has a signal for intake, your dopamine and your addictive tendencies tell you it's a craving for something super tasty, then you're automatically gonna eat something super tasty and you're gonna mess the glycemic index roller coaster up and you're gonna be feeding the bad gut biome and you're gonna be setting yourself for bad sleep with a bad craving cycle and you're gonna be feeding the addiction and all of these things. So we gotta solve them. So how do we actually solve these sugar cravings, how do we get rid of them forever? So let's talk about the solutions. So one of the number one most easy solutions is to put yourself on a high protein diet. When you put yourself on a high protein diet, you're setting yourself up for success. The studies show that a high protein diet reduces sugar cravings by about 60%. That's a huge number. That's, that's, that's most of the sugar cravings. And, and the big thing there is why this happens is for two big reasons is one, Protein is really good for balancing out our blood sugar and for lowering the amount of blood sugar spike we get from a meal. So that's great, it digests slower, it processes better, it's super satiating, so it makes us full for longer. But on top of that, when we eat high protein, most of the time those meals are not gonna be packed with a sugar uh, implement. There's, it's very low likelihood that you're gonna be eating a steak with candy. So when you pick the right high protein diet, you're gonna set yourself up for excess. Low glycemic, this is a word that people need to learn, that everyone needs to learn. So if you wanna be healthy, you wanna be happy, low glycemic diet is gonna be the way to go. Because the truth is that a low glycemic diet can allow sugar, it can allow carbohydrates. It's just about intaking them the right way. When I eat a cookie, I could eat a highly processed, full of sugar cookie, or I could eat a cookie that has a high fat content, has better quality ingredients, and sets myself up to not spike my blood sugar as well. And as much as anything else, if you're eating rice and you put oil on it, if you're, you're eating a smoothie and you put nut butter in it, you can basically significantly reduce the blood sugar spike you get from it, which will also significantly reduce the dopamine you spike you get from it, helping this addiction process get better throughout the way. Uh, Sleep, sleep is so big. If you want to reduce your sugar cravings and just honestly, almost any goal you have in your entire life, sleeping better is gonna be huge. One, addictive tendencies almost tend to get worse when you have lack of sleep. It's just, it's just the truth of it. Also, when you have a lack of sleep, you're going to be craving more, you're gonna be hungrier more, you're gonna have more palatable foods on your mind. So sleeping more is gonna save you a lot of that damage. Uh, smart swaps, this kind of goes back to the high protein and low glycemic diet. There's so much, uh, there's so much proof that just shows that you can eat a lot of these hyper palatable foods as long as you make them the right way with the right macronutrients. So if you take, for example, uh uh, ice cream bowl and you swap it out for something that's gonna have a little bit more fat content, it's gonna digest a little slower and maybe something with even protein in it, what you're gonna do is feed your body the right stuff, get the right signals, stop a lot of the stuff that's coming in your body that's making you crave sugar in the first place. Fixing the gut, I said it before, this is gonna be one of the most important parts of getting rid of your sugar cravings. And how are we gonna fix our gut? So first and foremost, we need to start feeding it the right stuff. We need the good bacteria to grow, we need the bad bacteria to, to die. We need it to slow down its growth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed ourselves high fiber foods, we're gonna feed ourselves oats and all sorts of these natural healthy foods, but we're also gonna put fermented foods in our diet. And the biggest part is gonna be to stop feeding the sugar to your gut. The more you feed the sugar, the more you're gonna keep feeding that craving, that, that the gut biome that wants sugar. But the more you feed it the right stuff, the more it'll slowly adapt its place into a place where it's no longer begging you for sugar. We can rewire our brain, this is a big one. So a lot of the addictions come from the sugar to dopamine to addiction uh, cycle. And the truth here is that instead of us getting our dopamine from sugar, 
We can get dopamine from a lot of other sources. There's a lot of things in the world that make you really happy. They'll spike your dopamine that are healthier habits. So when you find yourself in need for craving, find something that would make you just as fulfilled, maybe in a completely different category, that would help you rewire your brain. And a lot of this is just about slowly over time reducing your sugar intake and getting into a lower and lower glycemic diet, higher and higher protein. And over time, those dopamine spikes and your addiction to the sugar will lower itself. And, and, and the last one on the board is hydrate. If you're not hydrated, you are gonna be craving sugar infinitely more than someone who's dehydrated. Uh, no, set, set that backwards. You will be craving sugar more than uh, obviously someone who is hydrated. So when you're hydrated, not only are you gonna minimize signaling for food or intake, because probably 80% of our brain's signaling for intake is for water. But most people take it, like I said, as a signal for anything that they could put in their mouth. So make sure you're hydrated and you can reduce about 80% of that signaling. So like I said, to go through it again, we are going to reduce the amount of sugar we eat. We're just gonna avoid it. We're gonna have less of it because the more we avoid it, the less dopamine will spike, the more sensitive we'll become to the dopamine and the less addictive tendencies we'll have. We're gonna make sure that we sleep enough so that we can fix the stress sleep craving cycle because that is one of the biggest things keeping you stuck in the way you feel in the crap that, you know, every day you wake up tired, exhausted, and eating the same bad stuff, we're going to fix that. The gut microbiome, we're going to feed ourselves better stuff. We're going to stop feeding it sugar, and it's going to fix itself. Uh, glycemic index, we're going to make sure we eat high-protein diet. We're going to make sure we eat low glycemic diet, and that's going to set us up for success. It's also going to help with a lot of our other goals. And lastly, we're going to stop confusing signals. We're going to make sure we drink enough water. We're going to make sure we take the right supplements. We're going to make sure we set our body up for health and success so that when any of these things come into our place, we know how to handle them properly. And if you do all this, not only can you fix your sugar cravings almost completely, but you'll probably end up getting significantly healthier and happier, losing weight, all the things that you want throughout the process. So make sure you attack these this year because this will be the last year you crave sugar.